everyone, we're going to be continuing on with our topic today and we're going to be starting off by looking at dragons and if they are a myth or if they are real. Now, I'm not going to jump straight into our learning intention and success criteria because we've got a wee bit of background first about the mythology of dragons and once we've went through that, I'll then go into our main task and what our learning intention is for the day. Okay, so unfortunately, the dragons from our How to Train the Dragon story are only really real in our imagination. However, in the past, some people believed in real dragons. One map from 1413 had this written above a picture of a ferocious creature. It said, here also are huge men having horns four feet long and they are serpents, also of such magnitude that they can eat an ox whole. So hundreds of years ago, someone wrote down that there was a snake-like creature that was so big that it could eat an ox, which is kind of the size of a cow, in one go. So that makes us think that in the past, they must have believed about animals like dragons. In the past, most things that couldn't be explained were blamed on dragons, like bad weather, failing crops, disease, and even war. Anything that didn't quite go to be plan, go to plan, sorry, could be blamed on a dragon. Dragons have appeared in every ancient culture since the beginning of time. They could be a force for good or evil. They could even live at the bottom of a sea or a lake. They could live in thunder clouds and create storms and lightning. I really like the idea of a thunder dragon. And they could breathe fire and have enormous power. And that's really the myth that we are most familiar with. In many cultures, the dragon was seen as the enemy of man and was to be slain at all costs. Scandinavian hero Beowulf slew Grendel and his mother and in turn was himself slain by a dragon. In Babylon, the Chaldean Timat was overcome by Marduk and in Greek mythology, a dragon fought for the Titans, attacked Athena and was eventually banished to the heavens to be a star. One of the labours of Hercules was to slay the dragon Laden. And St George defeated the dragon, threatening the people of Selene. So these are all stories that we might have heard in the past that are all about the relationship between dragon and man. So there are different types of dragon that appear in mythology and in different cultures. There's a western dragon, the Chinese dragon, the eastern dragon, and there's even a new sort of dragon. So the western dragon, this is the one that we are most familiar with. They're usually painted as evil, mean and bloodthirsty. And in tradition, they normally protect, protect huge hordes of gold and jewels hidden in their lairs. If you've ever seen a hobbit, this is like the type of dragon in the hobbit that protects all of the golden treasure. And you can see here that the dragon killed by St George and the red dragon on the national flag of Wales are western style dragons. So this is the one that we are most familiar with. There's also the Chinese dragon, which is very detailed. And there are nine main features that are represented through this dragon. The head is that of a camel. Its eyes are the demons. Its ears are the cows. Its horns are the branched antlers of a stag. Its neck is a snake's, its belly is a clam, the soles of its feet are a tiger's, its claws are like that of an eagle, and the 117 scales that cover its body are those of a carp, and 81 of them are said to be made of a kindly essence, whereas 36 are a destructive essence, and that's yin and yang. The dragon is so important to Chinese culture that they devote entire celebrations to it. The dragon boat was traditionally made and based in the Pearl River Delta, but over the past 100 years, it has developed into an international sport. So as you can see, dragons are really embedded in the Chinese culture. There's also the Eastern dragons, and there are three types of Eastern dragon, the three-toed, four-toed, and five-toed. Three-toed are Japanese, Four-toed are Indonesian or Korean, and five-toed are Chinese. They're shown in the colours blue, black, white, red or yellow. And they're usually shown with a peril in their mouth, under their chins or in their claws. And there's also a new type of dragon, one that becomes more familiar in more modern stories. 
And those are really kindly dragons. So Kenneth Graham, who's the author of The Wind and the Willows, wrote about a kindly dragon in his story, The Reluctant Dragon. And this began a different attitude to Western dragons, and it started this really traditional um, view of dragons from being about scary dragons who were breathing fire, and it changed to more gentle and generous dragons, like the dragon and Pete's dragon, and like the dragon that we meet in How to Train Your Dragon. Now, coming to the present day, because we've heard now about dragons as myths and how stories of dragons have really became embedded in our culture, but there are actually lots of different animals alive today that can be thought of like as real life dragons. So there's the Komodo dragon, and the Komodo dragon is the largest species of lizard in the world. They are carnivorous animals that no one even knew existed until 100 years ago. The boys and girls, there are people who have dedicated their lives to tra traveling around the world and recording different species of animals. So to only discover this animal 100 years ago, that's actually really unusual and quite something. Okay, because look how big this animal is. It is the largest species of lizard and no one even knew about it until 100 years ago. Now, I have uploaded a really cool video of two Komodo dragons fighting onto the assignment. I have tried to put it into this PowerPoint, but it didn't work. So if you'd like to see just how strong these animals are and how much they really represent the strength of a dragon, I would really recommend watching that video. Now, you also get bearded dragons, which some of you might recognise. They come from Australia and they're popular pets. They can actually puff out their throats and make an impressive spiked throat that almost resembles the kind of frills on the side of a dragon. There's also a dragon snake, which are named because of the knobbly black scales on their bodies, and they go hunting for frogs at night. And finally, you get the sea dragon, which to me really does look like a dragon, and they have these sort of leaf-like appendages. You can see they look like leaves on their bodies, and they resemble kelp. That should say kelp, sorry, that's a spell mistake. And that helps them stay camouflaged so they can kind of steadily and slowly bob along amongst the kelp and the predators can't see that they're there. So that is really a good defence mechanism for them. Right, so what are we actually going to be learning now? So you've been listening to me chatting about dragons as a myth and some real life dragons and now we're going to be looking at your actual task for today. So you're learning to research and present findings in an information report in the style of a fact file. You're going to be learning that through this PowerPoint, through your own research and through looking at examples and then creating your own fact file. We're learning this to be successful learners who can research and present information in a logical way. We're doing this to communicate information in a visually appealing manner, so in a way that looks really effective and really gets our message across. And we're also doing it to be successful learners who retrieve prior knowledge, so think back to what we already know about information reports and apply these skills to a new context. So we already know that we have to have headings and subheadings. So we're going to be using that knowledge in this assignment. So we'll be successful if we include topic specific vocabulary, which means words that you would only find in a report about these specific animals. If you use appropriate headings or subheadings to organise information. So if you're going to be talking about the diet of an animal, you would have a heading that says diet and you would have the information underneath it. You can include diagrams or pictures and you could also use bullet points. Now, boys and girls, on that note of diagrams or pictures, that was one of the things that I noticed and your last information report says that some people just forgot to put in a picture. So please do include that because it really helps to illustrate your report. Now, you can choose any of these animals that we've talked about, the real life dragons, to do a fact file on. I would recommend that you choose a Komodo dragon or a sea dragon because there is more information on them and I'll be putting up some good research links in the assignment for them. But if you're really passionate about one of these other real life dragons, then that's fine as well. You can also research them too. It's up to you. Right, so our task is to research one of these real dragons and make a fact file. We want to research an animal, put it together in a fact file to really educate people about these animals. 
you need to make sure that you include some of these suggested headings. Habitat, so where can this animal be found? What is its habitat like? Does it like warm places, cold places? Is it living underneath the sea, on land? Its diet, what does it eat? Is it a predator or is it a herbivore? Pet dishes and prey, so if it is a predator, what does it eat or what tries to eat it? The size, how big can these animals grow? What weight do they become? Lifespan, how long do they live for? And some fun facts, you'll quite often find in a fact file that there is a fun fact section for any interesting facts that don't quite fit into any of these headings. So you might want to press pause just now and make a wee note of these subheadings so that you can use them for your fact file once you get started. Right, so here's some top tips before we move on. Include a photo diagram or picture. This really helps to make your report stand out and it means it's not as boring as just reading a lot of text. Use bullet points to organise information. Only include facts in the information reports. We shouldn't really have any opinions in there. We shouldn't have, oh, I think Komodo dragons are the coolest animal ever. Even if you do think that, an uh, information report isn't quite the place for it. It should be all factual things, things that can be proven. You can use bold or underline or different colours or maybe even bubble writing to make your heading stand out. And think about how you can use your digital skills to make your fact file stand out as well. So you can do this on your jotter, on a piece of paper, or you can do it in PowerPoint or in a Word document. So you might want to change the colour of your subheadings, you might want to um, choose a different type of font, but just think about how you're going to make them stand out. So let's have a look at some examples. Here we have an example and it is a Scottish animal fact file. And you can see it's obviously about red squirrels because there's a picture of a red squirrel. So I can see that straight away what this fact file is about. We can see that there are headings at the side. What I would say about the headings is they don't really stand out. They're the same font, they're the same colour as everything else. So try and make sure your subheadings are clearer. You can see that there are bullet points as well and it also has information on the lifespan, the habitat and the diet and so on. I also like that this report has organised the different sections in these text boxes, the text boxes that have been coloured in to really make them stand out from the Scottish flag background. So that's something that's really effective about this fact file. Look on to this next fact file, which is really fun as well. This one's about a Komodo dragon. This fact file has obviously got a picture in the middle and they've got an animated gif, which is really quite fun. You can see that this one hasn't got subheadings, so which means it's harder to find the information that you're looking for. But I do like that this one has used different colours to organise different parts of their fact file. This is now another example that's taken from a book, but this is one about a killer whale, which we learned about in our oceans topic. I've chose to put this in because you can see that this has actually got a diagram in the middle of the killer whale and that it is labelled, so different parts of its body are labelled and then more information is then given through the labels. So if anyone is looking to challenge themselves, then that would be a really good way to do it through having a labelled diagram. And again, you can see that the subheadings are coloured in different colours to really make them stand out. Okay, so boys and girls, I hope that has been useful. I'm really excited to see these fact files. So again, you can pick one of these real life dragons. It is up to you. I will put some links in the assignment. You can do this in your jotter, on a piece of paper, in Microsoft Word or in PowerPoint. It is completely up to you as long as you meet the success criteria here. Okay, so have fun with your task, boys and girls. Bye for now.